Hello everyone, my name is Joel Lopez and this is the story of my job as a car dealership photographer. So I work at a car dealership here in Ventura, California. To be more specific, I work at an Acura dealership. I photograph new and used vehicles. I will say this though, this is not a glamorous job. But it is a fun job in the sense that I almost never get told what to do and as long as I do my job, no one ever bothers me. That's one of the best parts about this job. I also get to drive a lot of cool cars, I get to drive a lot of Acuras, both new and used. I get to drive a lot of used cars, Ford, Chevrolets, Lexus, Mercedes, BMWs, things of that nature. I'm not a huge car person myself, I drive a truck. Nonetheless, it is fun to drive all these cars on a regular basis. The question is, what does a car dealership photographer do? Take pictures of cars, of course. But there's more to it than just that, obviously. All right, so every morning or every day when I come in, I clock in and then I get on the dealership's inventory website and I see which cars need photographs and I write down the stock numbers of all the cars that need photos. So I would write down the stock numbers of the new cars and used cars that need photos. As soon as I had the two separate lists, one with new, one with used, I would go to the keyboard and I would get the keys to the cars that needed to be photographed. This is what you do when you're trying to find a car amongst a huge lot of cars. You take the key, you take the key, you press the alarm button and Voila, find it just like that. All right, here we go, turning it off. So if the car needed to be washed before being photographed, I would wash it really quick. This was almost always the case with new cars because they had been sitting on the lot for a while before I can get to them. As soon as the car was ready to go, I would take it to this golf course parking lot and I would begin the process of photographing the vehicle. The first thing I would do is get out and take a picture of the stock number on the windshield. And I always ensure that the ISO is set at the lowest setting. We have the ISO set at 100. Then I will get the driver side three quarter shot, the front shot, a passenger side three quarter shot, side shot number one, side shot number two, rear three quarter shot number one, straight rear shot, rear three quarter shot number two. Then I will continue with the driver side door. Then the rear driver side door. If it was an SUV or minivan, I would open the rear door and photograph the rear compartment of the vehicle. If it had a third row seat, I would take a picture with the seat up. Then I would stow the seat and I would take a picture with the rear seat stowed down. And then I would take a picture with the second row up and then the second row stowed away. I would go around to the right rear passenger side. Open the rear passenger door. Put the seats up again. And I would photograph the rear seat and then I would move to the front. I would open the door. I would get a shot of the passenger seat. Make sure it's properly exposed. Close the front door. Get in the back seat. If there are any controls on the rear part of the center console, always, always try to get it. I close the door. Close the sunroof. Now this is the part where the alignment of the front seats comes into play because you want most of the seats to be as level as possible in the front there. That way it doesn't look messy in the photos. All right, that looks pretty good. Make sure the steering wheel is leveled out as well. The way I do it is I simply put the camera at the highest level I possibly can. And I lower the ISO once again to the lowest possible exposure where everything is properly exposed. Looks pretty good. And I try my best to use the grid lines as guidelines to make sure where the camera is evenly leveled out. I do a close up of the center console. Once again, using the grid lines to make sure the camera is properly leveled out. And then I move behind the driver's seat and I stick the camera in the front of the headrest to try to get POV shots so that whoever's seeing these photos more or less gets a feel for what they would be like if they'd be sitting in this front seat. And I try to get all of the controls in the front from this angle as well. And then I get another zoomed in shot of the steering wheel and the center console. Once again with most of the controls in the shot. Alright, I take all my camera back, put it back in the front seat, get out of the vehicle, go around to the front of the vehicle, lock the doors. And if the vehicle has a map, I make sure to navigate the menu. Now that we have the map pulled up, zoom in all the way. We're gonna photograph it. I never usually have an issue with reflections except for these particular vehicles. 
and then put it back in park. Then I photograph the steering wheel with my legs out of the shop, preferably. I'm gonna try to do it as evenly as possible. Then I get another photograph of the dash. Then I open the door. I get a photograph of these controls here on the left side of the vehicle. Up the ISO, however needed. Open the hood. Take a picture of the door panel. And then go around to the hood, open it up. Take a picture of the interior of the hood. And that's it. Call it a day. Pretty fast car, I'll give you that. Okay, so at the end of the day, I would go back to the dealership and I would upload the pictures to the website. I wouldn't edit them, I wouldn't do anything to them. Straight from the memory card to the computer. And that was it, nothing to it. For the camera, I use a Canon 70D. I use three lenses when I'm photographing the vehicles. For the exterior shots of the vehicle, I use a Canon EFS 18 to 55 mm zoom lens. When I'm photographing the exterior of the vehicle, the lens is zoomed all the way in. For the interior of the vehicle, I use a Canon EFS 10 to 18 mm lens, zoomed all the way out. It's a wide angle lens. And for close up shots of the interior controls, I use a Canon EFS 24 mm macro lens. And I honestly have zero complaints about this particular setup. Sometimes, not all the times, vehicles needed to be jump started. If a vehicle has been sitting on the lot for a while and no one's touched it, sometimes the battery will die. But once you jump start it, it'll be fine again. But luckily for me at this dealership, they had several jump starters that they would let me use so that I can take it out to the vehicle, jump start the car, leave it running for a bit. The battery died, or the battery is dead on the Honda Pilot. So I came to get the jumper box to be able to jump it. The hood is already open on this vehicle. I opened it as soon as I found out that the battery was dead. So I wouldn't have to deal with it when I came back. I'll put my head inside real quick. Close it. So once you jump a vehicle, one thing you want to do is leave it on. Just for a while, leave it running. And always make sure you're wearing glasses or some sort of safety goggles. Because sometimes sparks will fly out at you or will jump out. And you don't want those sparks landing in your eyeballs. Because that would not be a fun time. Up, I'm ready to go. Keys. There shouldn't be any reason why it won't start. Just like that. Good to go. In the meantime, we're gonna keep the jump box with us just in case it does decide to die out on us while we're out there again. I gotta deal with these things from time to time as a car photographer. Uh, well, I used to be a porter back in Texas. I used to deal with that all the time. Batteries tend to die a lot when, or tend to run out of juice or whatever. A lot when they're just sitting on a lot or they have a light that's left turned on somewhere. All oh, right, we're looking for three used cars. The keys are not in the keyboard. So they're coming back here to check and see if they're getting cleaned so I can wash them real quick. This is Alonzo. This is Alonzo! Hello, Mr. Alonzo. What's up, guys? I'm shooting a video today. Awesome, dude. A day in the life of Joel. Huh? A day in the life of Joel. A day in the life of a car photographer at the dealership. Awesome, dude. All right, here's the deal. We're going to get this car off the curb so I can go photograph it, but I either take all of these cars off and get out this way, or I'm just straight off the curve. It's not that far of a drop. Steven here. Steven here is going to take the risk. You got this, sir. Sexy.
So I worked this job for about three years roughly. It was a really good job, it was a very good learning experience and by far one of the funnest jobs I ever had. But it was time to move on. Sounded pretty good. Cut.